every time I've got a BBC, <laughs> right, it's all about make an appointment, you know, customer, you know, sales, or customer says, hey, I got, I, you have an F-150 on your lot. Is it available? When can you come see it? Well, does it have Apple CarPlay? When can you come see it? When, right? I want to just sell them a call. Right? I want to eliminate all that kind of stuff. I want to put them in a spot where I can sell a car. Whoever's on the phone, whether they're on email or whether they're texting, I want to sell them a car right there on the spot. Delivery's cheap. Mm -hmm. I can take it to them wherever they are. Is there a question statement there? Yeah. How, how do I run a BBC that's not... I don't want to run a BDC like that. Tag me in. Okay. okay. All right. so, so I'm in. All right. Okay, so first I'm going to say this. Do I need to step back? <laughs> I, 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 I love this because whenever somebody starts the conversation of all the... Like, whenever I had a BDC, and this is what I love to do, and I have a visual prop right here. Yeah. I've got a Puerto Rican wife. And the first thing she said to me about my ex-wife is, I'm not that chick. Yeah. So I don't want to hear about the shit that you had with the other girlfriend or the other wife or whatever. You're with a woman now, you know what I'm saying? So again, what I'm trying to translate is, I don't know who built your BDCs before, how they trained your people. They hurt you. But again, that wasn't dealer synergy us. It's a whole different experience. The first thing I'm going to say is this, is that I used to average over 30 units a month on the showroom floor, and that's like verified. You know what I mean? I got my DPs that even put that out there. The problem is this. The biggest problem I see is like to BDC or not to BDC. The question is, should salespeople do it? Or should there be BDC reps? I'm going to tell you unequivocally, it has to be BDC reps, at least in part. The reason being is that there's eight ways that a showroom salesperson can sell a car. Walking, VBAC, internet, phone, prior customers, orphan owners, service conversions, referrals, and the lost art of prospecting. How in the world is a salesperson, even a 30, 40, 70 unit per month you know, person, to able to maximize all eight ways and do all the follow-up? The answer, it's, it's impossible. So for us, the way that we do the BDC, it's a hybrid. So I have appointment centers, but I integrate them working in unison. D is one of our clients from Win Ford, okay? Uh, you know, my man Roy, the Wolf Davila is part of the Foundation's Auto Group. It's a multi-billion dollar dealer group. They're on our program, and what we do is we have the appointment setters working in hybrid with the salespeople. So now, my main thing is this, it's follow-up. The purpose of a BDC, in my opinion, it's a follow-up department. I've been doing this for 23 straight years. Sometimes, true or false, it takes days, weeks, or months to get somebody on the phone. Okay, so then the internet department or BDC is not a sales department, it's a follow-up department. Uh, give me an example, you have six stores? Three. Three, okay. Give me one of the stores, I search like a profile. Okay, which top all stores? Okay, Ford dealership? Yep. Easy, how many leads do you get from internet and phone per month? About 550. Okay, now, is that raw or did you vet them out and say, did you take out dupes? So that's, that's after duplicates. Strike one, okay? So yep. here's the thing. The reason why it's only 8 to 10% closing ratio is because we're factoring in dupes, bad leads, etc. So now, put them back in. How many raw leads do you think you get a month, internet and phone? About 850. Miles. Okay, so first problem I'm going to tell you right there, and I'm going to give you this video for free, right? Okay. No strings attached. Okay. Is that if you only have 550, you're talking about 350, you know, that's a 3 to 350 bad leads. I'm going to tell you right now, that's way past industry standard. Industry standard should only be about 10 to 12%. So that means if you've got 800, maybe, maybe 160 of those leads is at best bad. Well, I have a bad problem with duplicate leads because I have a digital retailing company that likes to... So Put then there's duplicate leads so, in so, every time so, they so follow me. change so they, something but, on there. But that's, <laughs> so there's a marketing problem. There's a, there's a lead generation yeah. strategy problem. But let's play it out. Let's just say that you have, I'm going to dumb it down to 700. Okay. If you've got 700 fresh leads from last month, from February, how many units did that store deliver uh, that month from the internet and phones? From the internet and phones? Not BDC, not unsold from traffic, just internet and phones. If you told me that you had 800, okay, so now watch this. It should be a don't, minimum. Don't record. No, this, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is good. No, this, this, this is this is my evidence manual. Okay. This, this, yeah. this, this is why. No, no. Okay. But, but watch some quick math, right? Okay. It should be 70 cars minimum, right? That would be 10%. But watch this. March 1st. What CRM do you have? 
Uh, we just re-signed with Big Solutions. You know that I'm the Jedi Knight with Vin, right? <laughs> no, but, but no, no, no. Like, I'm dead serious. Like I have an, a, a very high-level partnership with Vin. I have my own Vin store. We, I set up over 500 rooftops in Vin myself. Okay. Yeah. So the, 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 if you just go to YouTube and type in Sean B. Bradley or Gil Synergy Vin Solutions. The head of performance management, Mark Vickery, talked about all the unique shit they've done with us. There's no trainer at our level on VIN. I'll show you some shit in a second, but watch this. In February, last month, how many um, leads do you think that you rolled over with? Here's another way of accident. March 1st, yeah. if you ran a report in VIN, right, it's gotta be a custom report, all active internet and phone ups that are 90 days or less. How many do you think would be there on March 1st? Oh, jeez. Yes, 800. Okay, uh -huh. it's going to be closer to 1,000 or 1,200. Let me explain to you. Okay. If you have 800 raw leads a month, right? Yeah. You're only selling 30. That means that every month you're not selling 700 and what? 70 leads. You okay. see what I'm saying? I got you. I okay, got you. so now again, like some are dead, some are bogus, but yeah. some are carryovers. The manufacturers, Ford, before the pandemic, it was an 87 day gestation period. That means when somebody went to the Ford manufacturer's website, it took them on average three months before they actually pulled the trigger. Because of the inventory crisis, it's pushing that out to at least 120 to 160 days. Okay, so again, but forget about that. So again, in March 1st, if you ran a report in VIN, I guarantee you go back to your dealership. Yeah. If you run a report today, you have at least a thousand to twelve hundred active leads that are ninety days or less. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Okay, so now follow me. On March first, this is where it's gonna hurt a little bit. And I want you to rewind slow. <laughs> Get this right here, okay? Okay, yeah, watch. If you started March first with twelve hundred active leads that are ninety days or less, that's before you get one fresh up at all from, from the month of March. So how many cars should you sell with 1,200? Well, 10% of that is, is kind of hard, okay? But 5% of that is 60 cars, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So before you get one fresh up, now if you've got, I'll use this to the number 700, if you got 700 fresh leads, that's 70. I swear to you, swear, Scout's Honor, in front of like this conference or like that, <laughs> that your department with that much leads, you have about 120 unit a month department. I'm not saying because of the inventory, okay, but I'm telling you, lead opportunity. The way that you project for your department is by three variables. One is how many leads do I have? Second, do I have enough people to work those leads? Because if you've got, because just to put it in perspective, you're not handling 700 leads a month. You're handling 700 plus 1200. You're handling 1900 leads per month. True or false? Okay, so again, if you don't have enough people to physically do emails, phone calls, text messages, social media DMs, video emails, video text messages, you're only gonna get that. So again, so I don't mean this to hurt, but basically if you're only yeah, selling 30, straight, okay. yeah. <laughs> if you're only selling 30 units out of 1900 opportunities every month, so like you just saw the gentleman that was over here before that they're talking to, yeah. he was from a Ford dealership. Did you notice that? Yeah. That's from Bob Ruth Ford. You know who Bob Ruth Ford is? I do. Okay, that's the dealer that's all over the place. We took that Ford guy, single point Ford dealership. You know Rob Ruth, right? Okay. We are the one that took that store from going 75 units a month on the internet to 320 units a month on the internet. Population 2,500 in the sticks of uh, Pennsylvania uh, in Dillsburg. I mean like, that, that was the DP right here. He's been our client for like seven years. Okay, so again, what I do and what Dealer Synergy does is we specialize in getting all of the opportunities. Instead of just can't catching the low hanging fruit, the question is how can you sell more cars off of the 700 leads that you get fresh? But the bigger question and the bigger value to your organization, in my opinion, is how can I get the instant gratification from this month's leads, but more importantly, from the residual flow factor from the carryover leads as well. <laughs> so now you have three stories you said, right? The proper way, and I do this all the time, I'm doing this with his dealer group. He's got a multi-billion dollar dealer group right now, the, the Foundation Auto Group. Most people, yeah, that's that's one of the managers now. So check this out. If you guys were looking to turn around and build a centralized BDC, yeah, this is this is like free advice right here, right? Okay, okay. Okay, right. most people in your situation are going to try to set up the infrastructure to react to the leads that you have coming through. That's probably my psychic thing is what you're doing now is you're trying to react to whatever leads that you have right now. The right way to do it, in my opinion, 
is to go back and, and take each of the stores and reverse engineer them. Meaning, go back to the Ford store, for example, like the one you just profiled, and say, how, how, how many deals do I need and want to get from this store? Forget about the leads. And then, okay, if you wanted to sell 50 cars or 60 cars or 80 cars from that store, then reverse engineer how many leads you need to be able to do that. Then reverse engineer how many bodies, whether they're BDC reps or the hybrid, hybrid salespeople working in the BDC, in my model, how many of those people do you need to, to massage those opportunities? Does that make sense? So that's the proper way to build a BDC is reverse engineer. Dr. Covey says for the seven half of the people, begin with the end result in mind. Don't react, work by default. Do you know what I'm saying? I got you. So that's it, I just want, that's the free shit right there.